Hey guys, uh, I am Bill, uh, aka Felix of Felix and Friends, um, and I've gotten a lot of new gear in the past uh, month or so, and uh, so I wanted to um, talk about, you know, cool gear, uh, and uh, maybe, you know, show some beginners things they didn't know, and um, I don't know, maybe you'll learn something from this, or maybe something that you already thought will be reinforced by it. Uh, the main deal is I'm, I'm mostly just kind of showing off here, um, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, some practical tips and, and whatnot. So let's get into uh, the actual gear that I've got going on here. Let's check this out. So the first thing I want to talk about is my uh, 2016 uh, Fender Standard Telecaster. So that means it's a made in Mexico Telecaster, right? So what's the difference between a made in Mexico Tele versus a American Standard? Um, almost nothing these days. Uh, ever since the mid 2000s, what they've been doing is shipping, making the parts in California, shipping them over the border into Mexico, and then um, you know paying uh, cheaper wages for those parts to get put together. So, uh, for the most part, this is an American guitar, um, and it has pretty much the same quality, um, but you're just getting it at half the price. Um, uh, a few upgrades to this, and it is basically an American uh, made guitar. Um, one thing to point out, and this goes for tellies and um, for strats, is see the string tree here? This is like a eight bucks on Amazon, you get two of these. Um, you can replace these string trees with uh, the roller style that come on the American Strats. Uh, easy upgrade. Um, another thing would be, um, you know, maybe pickups. The pickups that came in it are fine, they're great. Um, a lot of people like to put um, an orange drop into, uh, you know, one of the, either the tone or the uh, volume pot um, on their tellies. Um, because of the response of it, uh, you know, you don't, you, you dial it back and, and um, you don't have to dial it back as much to, to hear the difference. But otherwise, honestly, uh, a made in Mexico Fender is um, not, you know, unless you're, you know, a, a fucking millionaire rock star, you don't need an American series Fender, you know. Made in Mexico is just fine. Feels the same, plays the same. Um, only, you know, real, real serious people will, you know, be able to tell the difference. Um, uh, over here in the corner is uh, an old Epiphone uh, that I have, an old Epiphone uh, acoustic. Uh, I don't pay too much attention to it anymore. Um, I, f I forget what model it is. Um, but it, it is the model that uh, Elvis apparently played, this model. Um, but these days, they're real cheap. They go for about 200 bucks. Uh, not a big deal. Whatever. Um, what I really want to talk about, though, is my new amp and these awesome pedals that I have. So, so first check out the amp that I'm using. It is, is a, uh, it's a standard Strat, right? So, no, no modifications, no upgrades or anything, just a, just a standard made in Mexico Strat. Love it. Uh, I got it in Portland Orange, which is a uh, limited edition color. And I've got that plugged into a Boss CS3 compressor over here, okay? Uh, also known as the worst compressor ever made. And you know what? I would agree with that. It is a horrible fucking compressor. Um, I'm going to trade it in and get something like a Dynacomp or something. Uh, the problem is with the uh, sustain. Right, so it's a compressor sustainer. So the compression part works fine, but if you try to use a sustain, you get all this hiss and fuzz out of it. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, use a use a noise reducer or something like that. And, ah, fuck that, I don't wanna do that. I want, you know, I just want a compressor that works. So I'm gonna get a simple Dynacom be done with it and, and tra trade this guy in. Um, but you know, for now, I, I do use it. It does work. Uh, I can dial in some settings that gets it to work, and uh, and get to even out my tone, um, getting out, getting get it to even out my dynamics when I need it to. 
Next comes uh, in the chain is the DS1. So the guitar is plugged into the compressor first, then we go into our overdrives and distortions. Um, and right now I'm just experimenting with the order that I stack my distortions in. I've got the DS1 first. And so the DS1 has, um, I don't know, I would call it the most distorted of all of these. Um, it, it's the harshest of all my distortion pedals, right? Uh, maybe I'll do a video where I actually like play it and you can, you can actually hear what it sounds like. Uh, but when I first started out, all of my old recordings um, were using a DS-1. All I had was a DS-1. Um, yeah, that was the only pedal I had was a DS-1. That's the only thing I had. I had DS-1, um, I had a Vox practice amp, uh, and then I also had a, um, a Roland JC120 that I ended up upgrading to. Um, but uh, all through it, uh, my all my dirty tones came from the DS-1. And I sold it, and for a long time I was like, I'm over it, it's a, it's a crappy pedal. Um, but I've come to love it again, it has its uses. So the DS-1 is plugged into Electro Harmonics Glove. You're going to see a lot of EHX, Electro Harmonics... Um, uh, pedals here. So the glove is basically sort of, it emulates um, an overdriven amp, basically, uh, a tube amp. And so the deal here is um, I have, if you could see this, if I can get the light right, sorry, the light in here is not that great, but um, I have the gain pretty low, right? Uh, and I have the volume set just so that it's a, at the same level as the amplifier itself. Um, and I usually have the the tone uh, switch off. Um, the tone kind of the tone switch sort of brightens it up. So what the cool the cool thing about the glove is that when you're playing it, um, it responds to your picking dynamics. So if you play it softly with the gain turned pretty low, it will sound like a clean guitar or a, a guitar that's just on the edge of distortion. And then if you really dig in, you get this really awesome um, distorted sound. Uh, a distorted sound that's a lot like the Soul Food. So I've got the glove going into the Soul Food, another electro harmonics pedal. Great distortion pedal. I would say of all my distortion pedals, um, this might be, I don't know, it's hard to pick between the glove and the, the Soul Food. The Soul Food is actually my my newest um, distortion pedal, so I, I don't have a lot of playing time with it, but I really like it. It's it's different from the glove in that, um, you know, of course every pedal picks up on your playing dynamics, but the Soul Food is straight up distortion. So you kick that thing on and, and you're overdriven like immediately. Um, I like to have the drive up real high on that thing and the tone um, pretty much in the center, right? Um, and you'd think you'd get kind of an even balance, but that's actually a pretty dark tone um, on a um, on a single coil instrument, like a uh, like a Strat or a Telecaster. Um, Soul Food can't say enough great things about it. It's great. Uh, oh, I made a mistake earlier when I said it might be my favorite. Actually, my favorite uh, in terms of distortion and fuzz and overdrive and all that would be the Big Muff Pie. So I have this Big Muff Pie. Um, I specifically wanted the big version, uh, not, you know, the um, the mini one that claims to do the same thing. I didn't want the Russian one. I didn't want the, the Tone Wicker one. I wanted an original, you know, big, um, you know, sort of hollow um, Big Muff. Right, and I got it, and I have marked my settings on here exactly how I want them. Uh, recently, with the new amp, I've actually had to change the uh, volume on it a little bit, but uh, otherwise, the tone and sustain uh, stay the same at all times. Um, and uh, so, with the with the big muff, sustain is basically your gain. Um, this is my favorite pedal of all time. Uh, you play it, uh, your your chords. You can you can hear the definition in your chords, even though this thing gives you fuzz like you wouldn't believe. Fuzz and sustain for for days. Uh, my absolute favorite um, distortion pedal. So that is running from my guitar 
So these are the pedals that are going from my guitar in through the main, you know, line of pedals, and that is going into my amplifier, which I will get to in a second. Um, actually, let's get to it now, actually. So I also have this, uh, this, this mic right here uh, for recording purposes. Um, it's it's kind of, you know, it's a cheap, you know, like $30 amp uh, condenser microphone, but it, it, it gets the job done. Uh, for recording purposes. So, recently I bought a Fender Champion 100 amp, right? And um, it's it's awesome. It has, it's got two channels. The first channel is the clean channel, and I advise you to take your time dialing in your tone. So I've had this for about a week now, and I still haven't, I feel like I've finally dialed in my tone for the clean channel which was actually harder to dial in than, you know, the second channel. So I took my time, I, I dialed in the tone, and as you can see here, the volume on this thing, it's at two, and um, that gives you a, um, you know, for the room I'm in, it, it kind of blows you away. It's a loud sound. I have the uh, onboard effects on right now, so you might be able, not be able to tell. Uh, let me turn the onboard effects off here. Uh, let me see. Turn the onboard effects off. Okay, so. All right. Okay. So that's that's the volume of that thing. So that's at two, right? Two. Not two o'clock, but, you know, the number two position on volume one. Um, got my treble set at... Um, Trouble is at yeah, between six and seven, bass uh, at about eight, and my effects level is at ten just because I've been, you know, playing with uh, the different onboard effects. So um, the onboard effects, uh, not something that I use very often, uh, but they could be useful. Uh, most of the onboard effects I either don't really like or don't like as in I wouldn't buy them as pedals, so I, I have no use for them in an amp or um, I have a pedal that does it better. So uh, there's a auto wah as an onboard effect on here. That I might use, right? I might use the, the auto wah. Um, it has a flanger. Well, I already have, you know, a flanger, I'm good. Um, what else does it have here? A uh, flanger, uh, wah, flanger, um, vibrato. And there's different levels of vibrato. Um, chorus plus delay plus reverb all together. Then there's just delay, different levels of delay, different levels of tremolo. Um, then there is uh, delay. Um, and then finally reverb. Uh, reverb is one effect that I actually do use sometimes. 90% uh, of the time so far that I've been using the amp. And uh, FX level pretty much controls, you know, how how heavily mixed, you know, that effect is. Uh, how heavily, you know, uh, you perceive it in the mix. So that's channel one. Um, on to channel two, right? So channel two over here, right? You can see I could switch on and off channel two. Channel two is where you're gonna get your distortion and your different amp voicings. Uh, so far I have not played with um, I haven't gotten any distortion on channel 2. I like a clean amp, and I like to put distortion pedals into clean amps. I like to have a lot of headroom and mainly use distortion for my amps. So, um, you know, what I've done here is uh, I've got this gain at nothing, volume between 2 and 3, which gives me a sound that sounds, you know, uh, about this level. And in a room this size, it's pretty big. It annoys my fiance. She can't wait till I'm done practicing when I get home. Um, then we have volume two. Uh, okay, so then we have voice. So there's a number of different voices. You can look it up online. I'm not gonna go in depth with it, but there's a, there's a number of different tweed voices that you can use. Um, blackface Fender tones, uh, British tones, you know, that kind of emulate the Vox sort of tone. Um, incidentally, I do have my, my first amp here was a Vox that I've been playing for a long time, sitting on its side right now. Um, so different variations on the Vox. 
Uh, there's actually about 19 or 20 different voicings that you can do on this. Um, and right now my very favorite is uh, the jazz voicing. That's what I have it on right now, jazz. Um, the jazz voicing emulates a, uh, a JC120, which is an amp I had back in the day that I sold, that I regret. Um, I got it for a steal. It was a great amp. Uh, but now I have my uh, my Fender Champion, and um, it sounds, you know, really, really close to what that um, JC120 sounded like. Uh, so it's really cool to play with the voicings. Um, I haven't really, you know, gotten too far into that yet. Um, I'm just trying to establish, like, a bass tone on here, but uh, I, I feel like in the end my, my tone for Channel 1 is kind of set, and for Channel 2 I think I'm going to end up you know, be on, being on the jazz voicing. Um, channel 2, in addition to bass and treble, has, okay, we, we have our treble, and we also have our mids, and then we have bass. And then once again, we have effects level and effects select, okay? Those work the same way they do on the first channel. One thing that I haven't talked about that works the same way on channel 1 and channel 2 is um, tap tempo. So, this guy right this guy right here tap tempo you can push it down you know at a certain tempo and um, it will um, you know uh, it'll be set at that tempo so if you're using delay the delay will be set at that tempo you know if you're using tremolo it'll be set at that tempo you know etc you, you guys know what tap tempo is um, so what I'm doing actually with this is uh, it, it actually comes with an effects loop. First of all, let me talk about the auxiliary ports. So um, if you're one of those people who likes to break in speakers, uh, you can plug an iPod into this and, and play it for some hours. Um, it also has a headphone jack, so you can you know practice quietly in your room without disturbing anyone. I don't do that because I want to hear the full power of my amp. Now, here comes the effects loop. We have preamp out and power amp in. So preamp out is basically the send on any other amplifier. So um, after the preamp, right, at the preamp stage, we're sending our signal out and we're sending it into some other effects that come right before the power amp stage. So if you notice here, I'm sorry for the shoddy uh, quality camera work. I just fell over because I got a guitar in my hands. I'm kind of off balance. I have one line of pedals here. These guys are all going straight into the front of the amp. And this line of pedals over here are going through the effects loop. And the reason for that is I want this line of pedals, the second line of pedals, to be mixed in um, after the preamp stage or during the preamp stage. So here, I've got myself a nice uh, Electro Harmonics again, Neo Mistress, which is uh, a smaller version of their Electric Mistress flange, uh, a Neo Clone, which is a smaller version of the uh, Small Clone, um, which is the chorus pedal that uh, was popularized by Kurt Cobain um, on that one song that, whose name escapes me, uh, Come As You Are, I believe. Yeah, come as you are. Here, a non-EHX pedal, a Digitech pedal. Digitech, for a long time, in my mind, had this reputation of being, you know, kind of cheap. You know, it went, it went like Behringer, then Digitech, uh, then Boss, you know, and DoD and all them, and then, you know, the boutique pedals and, you know, Electro Harmonics. Um, they've really stepped it up with this one. This... Uh, Obscura delay pedal, altered delay pedal, is fucking amazing. Look up reviews for it online. Check it out even at your local music store. Um, it even comes with a really nifty little um, uh, little rubber thingy that you could put over the controls, and you know keeps it keeps people from knocking your controls around when you're not using it. Uh, and finally, another Electro Harmonics pedal. I have the um, the small Holy Grail, and so I usually I have that set to uh, Spring Reverb, um, 
not quite at 12 o'clock and this is my always on pedal i mean like no matter what i'm playing uh the holy grail is always on yes my my amp comes with reverb but i just prefer the holy grail reverb to my built-in uh you know amp reverb uh, the Champion 100 has great tone. Uh, I could do a video later on, you know, uh, showing you the tone. Um, that's not, that's, that's a video for another day. Um, it's a classic, uh, Fender Blackface amp. Um, let's see, what else can I say about it? It weighs about 45 pounds. Um, to, so you can see that scale. Here's a, um, here's my Telecaster right above it um it's about the size it's a little bit longer than my um nightstand which is right next to it i have a very small bedroom um my my fiance's vanity is like right over there we have a very small bedroom anyway so i have this and um the very last thing i want to point out about this uh fender champion 100 a couple things um two uh okay so two 12 inch speakers it's 100 watts going through two 12 inch speakers uh, the speakers are not perfectly aligned so if you want to mic up the amp you have to figure out where exactly the center of the cone is um, i've done that with my uh with my uh, boom stand here and i usually don't leave the windscreen on the only reason i leave the windscreen on is because the cats like to come up and rub against it and i don't want cat hair getting in there so i just kind of keep the windscreen on there when I'm not recording um, and the other thing about this amp is it comes with it comes with this see this little uh, this little wire here that's going to this foot switch what does this foot switch do this foot switch right here sw first of all it switches channels so I can go from channel one to two so I'm channel one, channel two, channel one, channel two, and it will show it to me just as a red LED. So right now I'm on channel two and with the effects off. Now I could turn the effects on on channel two. Awesome. Then I could move to channel one again. So it's going back to channel one and it's going to use whatever channel one, channel one's effects are. I could turn that off. So usually if I'm switching channels, what I do is I, you know, I move my channel on. If I'm going to use the effects, I turn the effects on. If I want to switch channels, I hit them both at the same time. And then I move on, you know, to the next channel. So, you know, some people have argued that it's sort of like having four channels in one. But to me, it's really like, you know, you have two channels and each channel has your choice of effects. Fender Champion 100, uh, it was... I bought it for $329. Um, it is a steal um, from everything I've heard, all the talk out there. I'm hearing that this is one of the amps um, that are actually going to go up in value. Um, it is a, it's a solid state amp. Everyone loves to hate on solid state, but it does have that warm feeling. Um, and... Uh, it's one of those ones that will become a classic soon. I'm so glad I snatched it up at the price point that I got it at because I know people are going to be, you know, begging for this in the future. It's going to go up, way up in price uh, in the future. Um, uh, and who knows what, uh, you know, what will come out in 2017, you know, at the NAM show. So, anyway, um, this is uh, Bill or uh, Felix of Felix and Friends showing you my rig and how I um, sort of set up set up my uh, gear to uh, to practice and record basically in my bedroom um, I have this uh, I've got this um, this USB uh, import in input you know this one line input that I could record you know vocals and you know stuff I could plug in a guitar if I wanted to, or a microphone, whatever, and monitor it. Um, that's part of my recording gear along with uh, my computer, but that's not here right now. And uh, it's sitting on top of my, my little 10 watt uh, box amplifier, which uh, will one day come back into, into use somehow. 
Um, I have also I got I got some other cool goodies too, like a, a um, an Ebo and uh, some slides. Um, but in any case, I just wanted to keep it to the amp. So Fender Champion 100, it is a fucking steal. Get this amp. It is amazing. So many, you know, channel one, first of all, you know, uh, is like a twin reverb sort of sound. Channel two, you can change the voicing on it to make it sound like any sort of amp, ranging from like the classic 60s tube amps all the way to like 90s, uh, 90s grunge, and you can get it all the way up to metal. Um, you know, a lot of different possibilities, a lot of tones come out of this amp. Um, and it's loud. It's loud as hell. Like, uh, we turned it up to five yesterday and it was unbearable. So that's it. Enjoy.